Hello, I'm George and welcome to another video. Before we get into this video, I just wanted to say thanks for all the subscriptions that you, uh, for those of you that have subscribed and thanks also for the comments you made regarding the videos so far. What this video is going to focus on is nasopharyngeal suctioning and that's simply sticking a catheter, a suction catheter down into the patient's nasopharynx, oropharyngeal area, uh, but going nasally and inserting the catheter nasally through the patient's nose and then proceeding to advance it into the posterior portion of the pharynx where you can remove, where you can remove all those secretions. So we'll kind of look at the equipment that's required to do this. So some of the things you're going to need, and it'll all depend on whether you're doing this sterilely or if you're going to be doing this with clean technique. Now I'm going to do the procedure with clean technique, but you might find yourself doing this with sterile technique on a patient, so you'd need the appropriate PPE and uh, sterile stuff for that. So we'll start off with the PPE. Obviously you're going to need gloves. You might need a mask, especially if you're doing sterile technique. Sterile gloves, if you're doing sterile technique. And of course, you may want to protect yourself, depending on what reaction you get from the patient, with some sort of gown. All right? Now some of the equipment you'll also require, suction catheters, since you're going nasally. Now sterile if it's sterile procedure, and adhere to clean technique if it's a clean procedure. You may require a kidney basin, like this one. Some sort of lubricant for the catheter so it's easier for the patient to tolerate. So some sort of water-based mucogel. A blue pad to put over top of the patient's chest. Remember, always have the adhesive side, not the adhesive, the absorbent side out. Right, because you want, if there's any secretions that come out of the patient and they fly onto the patient's chest, you want to be able to grab it and have it absorbed to the blue pad. So absorption side out. And uh, you may need a pinky. Not sure if you'll need one for sure. And some normal saline, like this. You can use the normal saline to uh, lubricate the catheter prior to putting it down to the patient's uh, nasal pharynx, or you might use it for cleaning out the patient after. It's not the patient, cleaning out the um, suction afterwards. For suction equipment, of course, you're gonna require your suction regulator right over here, and because it's nasopharyngeal suctioning, we're gonna use full line pressure for it. You'll also need your properly hooked up and set up and checked out suction collection unit, non-collapsible suction tubing, which you'll attach to your suction catheter. So to start this procedure off, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna don our PPE. So I'm gonna put this gown on right over here. I'm not gonna tie it up. I'm just gonna simply put it on so it's a protective mechanism for me. Next thing we're going to do is we'll get everything prepped once we get the rest of our PPE on. So if I needed a mask, of course I put on a mask. Now I said I'm going to be doing clean technique. So with clean technique, what I'm simply going to do is put some clean gloves on. Let's get the equipment set up. I'm going to take my suction catheter right over here. This is a 12 French. I'm going to open it up. We'll use this one here instead. I'm going to open it up. Now before I connect it to my suction source, I want to ensure that my suction is working. So I'm going to turn this to full, full line pressure, which is registering on the gauge. I'm going to plug it off here, closest to the patient. And I have full line pressure. So connect it up. Now I'm going to take the catheter out of the sheath. Lay that over there. And I want to lubricate the catheter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate the catheter with this mucogel. And all I'm going to simply do is open the mucogel like so and then I'm going to dip the end of the catheter into the mucogel and that's going to be my lubricant. There we go. So it's nice and lubricated. Now if I was going to use this right away I'd simply advance it into the patient but I've got a little bit more prep to do so I'm going to place this back inside the sheet like that. Also get some 
saline, put the saline in the bowl in case I need it. Again, this is clean technique, not sterile technique. So if it was sterile technique, make sure you adhere to the procedure for a sterile technique. So just to show you what I've done, pour the normal saline into my kidney basin, and here's the rest of my muco that I might be requiring should I need it a second time. Now if you happen to be taking samples to send to the lab, you may have to put some sample into the sample container. Okay? And then that would be labeled properly and sent to the lab. Now there's a special type of uh, tubing that you'd also be using, or a special type of suction and collection unit that you'd also be using, specifically for aspirating samples <clears throat> to send to the lab. Now the last thing I want to do is prep the patient. Now I don't have a patient here for this, but what I do have is me. So what I'm going to try to do or attempt to do is do nasal pharyngeal suctioning on myself. So to make it a little bit more realistic, I guess, I need to have something to suction out. And my mouth right now is fairly dry. So if you just excuse me for a second, what I'm going to do is try to put something in the back of my pharynx and see if I can suction it out. One sec. Well, that didn't work too well. I didn't get anything out. So what I'll try to do is do it a second time. I'll use the same catheter because I know where it's going. And I'll attempt to do that again. Place that back inside the packaging. Who would have known that you know, when you do this, it causes you to tear up. But it just goes to show that you need to have some empathy for your patients when you're doing that. And when I stuck that suction catheter back there, I could feel it go all the way to the back of my oral pharynx and into that hypopharyngeal area where it's starting to irritate and also starting to uh, produce a gag reflex on me. So let's try this again. I wish I had some oatmeal or something like that. Well, uh, I guess I got a little bit out, but not a couple lot to show you guys. Anyways, when you're done suctioning out the patient, you can kind of see there's some gunk in the suction tubing. What I'm going to do is just simply clean that out. Just want to leave your suction tubing nice and clean. There. Clean that out the rest of the way. And of course you want to assess your patient afterwards, check the vital signs before as well as after you have something to compare it to. You can leave the patient on the oxygenation source if it's a nasal mask, sorry, a simple mask or something like that. Um, the patient might also be ventilated and they could have an endotracheal tube in uh, oral. So you can still suction out the back of the pharynx going nasally. Anyways, after you're done, check the patient, make sure you assess them, check the vital signs, and then clean up all your stuff and throw it away in the proper receptacle if it's disposable. And then if you're doing some things that need to, or cleaning some things up that need to go for sterilization for reuse, send them to the appropriate spot as well. If you have any questions or comments about uh, anything related, or if you uh, like or dislike this video, please let me know. And if you get a chance, please subscribe to Nails Fear and Geosuctioning. Have a great day.